What is good enough for Star Citizen is not good enough for EVE Online. At least, that seems to be the takeaway message from certain members of the EVE Online community. Last week, a number of players rebelled against the developers when the CCP decided to start selling ships. This didn't go down too well, resulted in a protest. Ultimately though, a CCP have decided to back down. Now, for all the controversy surrounding this, there's a very interesting takeaway point. Why is it okay to sell ships for real world money in Star Citizen, but when it comes to EVE Online, this is not a good thing? Now, I'm fully aware at this point some people out there are going to be saying, but Obsidian, you're comparing apples to oranges. Well, you know, that's right. You can indeed compare apples to oranges. What you can't do is equate apples to oranges. Apples and oranges are not the same thing. The whole point of a comparison is to point out where they're similar and where they're different. So in this video, I'm not equating the two games and their respective communities. I'm just comparing them. So this is definitely one of those subjective questions. It's going to be, therefore, one of those rambling videos. So if you like this sort of thing, do keep watching. I know plenty of you do like them. If not, feel free to leave the video right now. So before we get into the meat of the subject, let's get you all caught right up. So the EVE Online Blackout, this is where a number of content creators and streamers decided to broadcast this warning message over on Twitch rather than broadcasting the EVE Online game. So the concerns were twofold. The first point was that buying ships with real world money allows players to skip in-game content. Basically, a noob player can come along and purchase everything they need to get straight into the deep end of the game. The second point, and perhaps the biggest point really, the one that really does hit home, is that every single element of EVE Online all the economy is player run. So when you as a player go out and purchase a, a bullet, or when you go and purchase a gun, or even if you purchase a ship, no matter the size, all of this is created by another player. This is one of the things that gives EVE Online such a strong identity. Now, when the developers of CCP come along and say they're going to sell a ship and artificially inject a ship into the game uh, for sale, then that really does undermine this core identity. It also undermines all the work that many players have been putting into EVE Online for many, many years. CCP then have acknowledged this point and they've decided to change their policy as to how they're going to sell ships. And yes, do keep in mind that the developers are still going to sell ships, they're not walking away from that pile of cash. What they're going to do instead though is instead of injecting ships into the game, they're going to be selling ships that have been created by other players, so uh, ships that effectively already exist within the game. So, does this fix the problem? Does this kind of get around the concerns that players have? Well, it kind of gets around the concern about the economy, the in-game economy. It doesn't really get around the concern of players skipping uh, content. But that said, players have been able to do this for a very long time in EVE Online. They've been able to buy premium currency in the form of Plex and exchange this for in-game currency, ISK, and then they can buy whatever they want and these skills to go along with it. Anyway, back to the main question of the video. Why is this a problem with EVE Online, but not a problem when it comes to Star Citizen? Well, it comes down to the core identity of both games, I do believe. When it comes to the core identity of EVE Online, it's down to the amount of work that the players have put in, owning huge swaths of the economy, owning great vast corporations that run entire star systems. They run entire industries that produce ships, weapons, and many other modules. These players then own entire sectors of space, basically empires, and this is based upon the work of said players. Now for Star Citizen, it's somewhat different. It's not about all the work that you put into the game, not necessarily anyway. Of course, in Star Citizen, you can go out there and earn money and you can then go and purchase ships or other equipment with that money. However, the core identity, I feel, of Star Citizen is its world, the very reality that you're inhabiting. CIG would say to you they're trying to create the most complex sci-fi universe ever developed. For many people, this is clearly a laudable goal. It's a very, very attractive proposition. Now, just as with in EVE Online, with everything really is based on consumerism, uh, that is how players create the industry and other players consume, there's a similar thing going on with Star Citizen. However, in this case, the creators are CIG and the consumers are the players. So, whether you're purchasing a ship, a vehicle, a land plot, or indeed anything else that CIG offer up at some point in the future, what you're doing here is buying a part of a massive sci-fi world. Or, indeed, if you want to look at it another way, then you're actually pledging towards helping CIG create this massive world, and therefore you're a part of the whole process. 
Now, not everyone is going to agree with that for sure, but it is, no doubt, how some people do feel. So, we have two very different core identities here, which in some respects are at odds with each other. For EVE Online, the CCP have created a massive sandbox world, and it's the players that create that universe within it. For Star Citizen, it's all about CIG creating that universe. So that's a somewhat quick and superficial look at the player's side of things. From the company side of things, however, it's all about marketing. Whether it's about CIG or CTP, they all of course want to make money, so marketing is very much how they go about doing that. So if we look at the recent prospector pack from CCP, this allows players to jump straight into the game, brand new players, and get access to a mining barge along with all the skills and equipment necessary to actually use that. So for players this is normally a significant time investment, it takes quite a while to get to that level, not ages and ages but you know, long enough. And from CCP's point of view what they're offering here is a way for pl players to bypass that. It also means that players can have a slightly easier time getting into the game and therefore likely stick about and possibly have become a long term player and therefore spending more money. So aside from the problems already mentioned that this is effectively skipping content, some players don't really agree with that, and it's also somewhat interfering with the player run economy, there's also a third problem. Essentially monetizing gameplay like this encourages the developers to slow down the grind to make it take far longer. In short, the longer it takes a player to achieve a specific goal, the more inclined that player is going to be to actually go out their way and spend some real world money. Either that or they're going to walk away from the game and well if they walk away from the game it's a free game so not really a big loss and that's just how the uh, management of the company may see it. And for game players as a whole in the wider gaming industry this has become a very very bad practice, not very well received at all and often it just comes down to the opinion of the well people you often hear the saying devs don't respect my time and what they mean is that the management, the marketing of a said company just wants to drive up the time investment in that game in order to encourage the players towards spending money. And ultimately, I do agree that this is a very big problem. You can't necessarily land at the feet of the devs, that's the lone coders, the individual uh, teams, whatever, but it certainly could be laid at the feet of the respective companies. So yeah, companies really do need to respect players' time, but how do you marry that hand in hand with the desire to monetize the gameplay? Now, if we keep this question in mind and look at Star Citizen, it becomes a very different prospect, at least at the moment. So currently, it's possible to earn in-game credits and go out and purchase ships. It takes a very long time, and most people aren't ever going to be able to afford to buy the largest ships in the games by uh, accessing it through gameplay, although some people have done it. So the main way of getting ships in Star Citizen still remains buying them with the real-world money. Now, Star Citizen avoids any of the big problems here by remaining in Alpha. It's still crowdfunding, and people are essentially pledging for these ships in order to fund the future of the game. Regardless, then, of your opinion about this particular strategy, whether you think it's uh, well, a bit scammy or a bit scammy, or whether you think it makes a good business sense, ultimately, what CIG have done here is avoided the whole concept of developers not respecting a player's time. But come release of the game is going to be a very, very different question. When you've got people who have gone out there and spent a thousand dollars for one specific ship, how do you weigh that up against in-game time investment? Just how long is a player going to have to spend in-game to earn the equivalent of what someone has spent one thousand dollars for? Is that a week's worth of gameplay? Six months? Ten years? What? At some point in the future, this is going to become a very contentious subject for CIG as well as its community of players. For now though, we're in a bit of a mixed situation. Games like uh, EVE Online and, dare I say, even Elite Dangerous, if they tried something like this, they're in for a hell of a storm. Yet meanwhile, the CIG managed to thrive, making tens of millions of dollars each year. And whilst EVE Online players tend to not be too happy about the amount of money some people may spend on purchasing ships, when it comes to Star Citizen, for some people it's a badge of honour and can really be bragging rights. So yeah, that's a very generalised statement, but I do feel it does apply at least at a broad level. At any rate, that's a few of my thoughts on this particular subject. Do let me know in the comments section below what you feel about it. Do you feel there is really any difference between the way EVE Online and Star Citizen are monetized? Are they the same in principle, or perhaps different in uh, execution or concept? Do you feel that no game whatsoever should ever be monetized in this manner? Or do you feel it really doesn't matter and is ultimately good business sense and whatever works? Do let me know below. 
As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.